right now um, I've just dried my second lot of shadows um, I'm looking again at my tones here in this area and they're much better now you can see and even the colour is quite approximating the, the photograph quite nicely uh, the next thing um, we're going well if you, if you still think that there are places where the shadow is not deep enough now is the time to do it um, I'm not going to do any darker shadows now we're just going to press off um, I want to talk now about putting spots in drawing the spots in um, first of all it's quite important to get the scale of the spots right that means that for instance here on the leg it's important actually to count how many spots there are going across um, if you don't do that you might make your spots too big or you might make your spots too small um, so in, in, one, in one area actually count the spots and get your spots to the correct number otherwise you could land up with a leopard with spots that are much too small or not enough spots the spots are much too big so these things are quite important it's the same with painting zebras you must get the correct number of stripes you can't just do random things people know what a zebra looks like it's got to look real it's got to look right the second thing about spots is that they are wonderful to create the shape they create the shape of the animal that you are painting if you do them carefully for instance you'll see up here right at the top on on the um, the back of the leopard there can you spots are also very useful for showing us the shape of the animal that we're painting um, remember that when when the back of the animal is going away from us the spots will get more and more foreshortened until they become just little flat lines on the edge. You'll see here on the leg, when the spot is facing directly, it's facing us directly. It's a, it's a round or square shape. When it gets to the side of the leg, again, it's just a flat line there because although that spot in, real, in reality is probably that shaped, because it's going around the side of the leg, it becomes more and more foreshortened and turns into a straight line. So it's very important to um, observe the shape and the um, recession of all these spots. You can't just put um, pansy-shaped spots all over your leopard because it'll look, it'll make the whole leopard just look like a flat cut-out shape. So the, all the spots have to be engineered so that they go away from us and they show us the roundness of this shape. I'm now going to start drawing, drawing in my, um, my spots and then I'm going to complete some of the details for you, um, starting with the eyes and the nose and maybe the whisker area. I'm going to concentrate for a while on the head. Um, I've drawn the main spot um, shapes that I want, getting the scale right. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, I noticed that I haven't painted the local colour of the nose. Brown matter is quite a useful one to use. Um, you could also use raw umber and alizarin if you don't have brown matter. Um, and if you think the brown mat is a little bit pink, just put a bit of umber with it. I think the brown mat is going to be fine. It just needs a little pinkness to separate it from the colour of the fur around the nose. Okay, now while that's drying, I'm going to um, start painting the eyes. You'll see I've already put a soft green in them. Um, leopards often have greenish eyes. The surround of a leopard's eye 
and the um, cheetah's eye and the lion's eye is absolutely jet black. The, the, the eyelids are really, really very, very dark. Um, I have found that if you paint that surround in um, straight away with, with very, very dark paint, and you've made a mistake, it's terribly difficult to get it out. But if you paint it first with a soft colour, raw umber is ideal. If you paint it first with a soft colour and then look back, let it dry, assess it, and if the shapes look right, it's easy to paint over. If the shapes don't look right, you could rub it out with, a, with a water on your brush. Just wet, dab, wet, dab with a tissue until you bring the, the pigment up. And then look again at your drawing and do it again in raw umber. When you're finally happy, then you can paint it very, very dark. So that's what I'm doing here. And to start very quietly with some raw umber to make sure that I've got the look of the animal right. You'll notice I've ch changed to a much finer, smaller brush. I can't do these little shapes with, um, with a big fat mop brush such as I've been using. Just need to see if you've got the look. Uh, while I've got this raw umber on, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow over the top of the eyeball. All eyeballs have shadow over them, underneath the lid. If you don't put it in, it always looks as though the eyes are bursting out and staring at you. So. I just want to modify this eye a little bit with some shadow colour underneath the lid. And you'll see how it helps the eye just to go back into the head. At the same time, I'm putting the tiniest suggestion of a pupil there. Very softly. I don't think it's in the right place. I'm lifting it out. I'll just leave the shadow for the time being. Now I'm going to do the raw umber around the eye on this side. And we'll see what it looks like. very weird at this stage when the shadows on the face are still so very strong um, and, the, and the details don't have supporting dark. Don't worry if it'll come out. I'm just um, putting in also again in raw umber. Just the sort of shape that I think the mouth is going to be so that I can check that it looks okay before I do it in the very very dark. So a leopard has got a very very dark marking on the on the edge of its mouth. Um, so it's not just shadow, it's very dark markings here. Right. I think these are the more or less the right shape. Um, so I'm going to paint them in dark now. Um, I don't really like using black and I think that I'll probably use raw umber, uh, uh, sorry, burnt umber with ultramarine blue. Um, in various quantities. I don't advise mixing a whole bottle of it. Have your blue in your palette, have your brown in your palette. And put the brown in first. Um, you'll see in the light, the spots are quite brown, they're not black. Um, and when you get into the shadow area, they look much blacker. But it, look, it looks great if you put the brown in first and then drop a little bit of um, ultramarine blue into the brown um, just to darken it and then each each little spot is there's lots of variety some are bluer some are brown it's not just boring one color here i go now with burnt umber and blue um, into this main close eye to try and get a um, really really dark on the lid I'm 
refer at all times to your photograph. You should be still at the stage of looking at your photograph really, really deeply. You can't look in at it. There's no black line at the top. The eyelid is catching the light. It comes right down to the eye, and the eye is darker than the lid at the top. this flat area so I'm going to lose some of the blue and work with the dark brown a little bit. shadow disappears. It's kicked into submission. Trouble is, if you don't get that strong enough before you start the spots, you can't easily put this, the, uh, more shadow on once the spots are there because the spots will leak. area like I'm working in now to vary the colour and make the spots rather reddish. Um, and paler. Now on this island it's 
quite a lot of hairy texturing, uh, which I'm going to just do with a few little a spot there that's sort of broken up. make them up of little hairy shapes which, which starts to give an idea of the texture of the leopard's fur. The cheek is starting to go, the temple here is starting to go around into the neck. So I'm starting to flatten the shape. Go around here to the As they get to the edge of the face, they get flatter and flatter. And it starts to show you the modeling. advancing too much on it, put quite a bit of shadow over it, just leaving a little bit of light at the bottom. That looks better. This one is in much more light. Um, you might think that the highlight here under the eye is a little bit sharp. We can always soften it a little bit later. I, just, I don't want to compromise the light there at this stage. We can put a little bit of yellow over it later if it looks necessary. So there's a start with the eye. It's looking fair to middling. Okay, I finished that eye, more or less. Um, I never really quite know if things are finished right until the end. You can't tell until you put the thing up on an easel and step back and um, assess it as a whole, but for the time being I'm happy-ish with that. I'm moving down to the nose now which is dry. I'm going to put a little bit more shadow on it and I'm going to use the blue because we need to define a nostril. We need to define the nostril here. Do it in blue first. I will I'll darken it later. This could also have been done in raw amber. There's the division right down the middle of the nose. And it's really dark down at the bottom. Like that. Okay. And now I'm moving down into the Hairy 
shadow shapes here in the in the beard. Which I'm just going to try and suggest. It's quite deeply shaded down here. We know it's white, but it's quite shaded. doing this wet, it gets this wet here and if it bleeds a little bit that's fine. It just softens the mouth otherwise it can look very hard. Now we're here into this very very dark area. At the side of the mouth here. And I'm doing it in raw umber first just to check that my shape is okay. Goes all the way up into the to the edge of the mouth and the sort of smile shape. I'm leaving that to dry for a bit and I'm going to the whisker follicles. They're very dark. run together. They, um, they sort of bleed into each other. I haven't drawn them, so I'm feeling a little bit insecure. down there. 